Hey guys, welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about the tank track system that we put together in the last video. Now, that last video that I did, it was mainly focusing on wheel synchronization. And you can see here, this is what we put together in the last one. And we were just using the driver spline, and we were rotating that in the B rotation value, and that was driving everything for us. However, even though everything was synchronized properly, this particular type of rig would probably work best on something that's stationary. So that means some type of pulley system or conveyor belt. Because if we were to grab the main null object here, and we were to push that along the ground, you can see nothing is rotating. So what we're going to be concentrating on in this lesson is how to set this up to where we could push this along the ground and it will actually roll for us. So for the last few days, I've been spending a couple of hours on this trying to come up with a workable solution because I can tell you that I kept encountering problem after problem after problem. And after I would solve the problem, then I would encounter another one. And regardless of what I did, I just couldn't get this thing to work properly. So what I want to do is I want to take a, just a couple of minutes to go over and show you some of the problems I was encountering, and then we're going to talk about the solution because I did find one. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to create it myself, but I still think it's going to be pretty cool what I have to show you. All right, so this main controller right now is in the X direction if we want to push this along the ground. So let's go into the Expresso. And for those of you wondering, this is just the same rig that we built before. So if you don't already have this rig put together and you want to follow along, you can just watch the previous video lesson and uh, that will explain how to put this together. All right, so we want to go over to the left hand side of this and we want to drag in the null. And we want to go to coordinates, position, position X. Now we also want to grab uh, let's see, we want to grab a math null. We want to change that to divide. And we want to take the driver spline. Now, notice that there's two driver splines here. One is for the front wheel that's driving everything, which is driver spline. And then driver spline dot one is the rear wheel. So remember, the front wheel here is what we want. So we want to take driver spline and drag that in. And for the output, we want to go with radius. So object properties radius and what we want to do is we want to take the position x for the null and we want to divide that by the radius for the driver spline and then we're going to output that over to the input side of the driver spline node for a rotation b so now if we take the main null and push it along the ground you can see everything is synchronized properly everything is turning there's no slipping everything looks good but in real life if you were going to be applying this to, say, a bulldozer or some type of army tank or whatever it might be, this thing is going to be spinning and rotating so it can turn. So if we were to take the main null and let's just say, let's rotate it 90 degrees and now push it in that direction, notice that even though we're using the X handle here for the X axis, nothing is rotating and nothing is moving. So now we have to fix this problem. So you have to go in now you have to go back to the Expresso and you have to add in the position Z so that whenever it's going in the Z direction, it will also rotate as well. However, if we were to take this null and rotate it around completely, let's just say your bulldozer or whatever it might be is going to rotate 180 degrees. And now we push it in the direction. Notice that it's spinning, but everything is in reverse. And of course, that's not going to work either. So these are some of the problems that I was encountering. So I was able to solve the Z direction. I was able to solve this thing spinning in reverse to get it to sync up properly and spin the correct way. But if we were to take this and rotate it to some type of random rotational value, let's just say something like, I don't know, let's go 32 degrees, and you were to push it, Notice that it is rotating and everything is spinning, but notice you've got some slipping along the ground. So let's zoom in here to uh, just look at this uh, up close. And if we push it, you can see the track is slipping along the ground. 
it's moving, but it is slipping. So that is another issue that I encountered and I just kind of got annoyed with it. So what I decided to do was I decided to look online to see if I can find a solution for this. Now, back in the days of R10, I built a couple of rigs with some wheels and I used a plugin called Rollit. Now, unfortunately, Rollit no longer works for Cinema 4D unless you're using R10, but I don't know anybody that's using R10. So I tried to install it here with, I uh, tried to install it with R13, it didn't work, and with R16, and it still didn't work. So unfortunately, Rollit is not going to work. And I was kind of hoping that it would because it was such an amazing little plugin that made anything roll along the ground. And it was really great and wonderful, but unfortunately, it's not going to be the solution this time. So I continued to look around online to see if I can find a solution to this. And uh, I found some tutorials on how to do tank tracks, but it was using dynamics and motors. So I think the motors is up here on simulate, dynamic, yeah, connector, spring, force, and motors. So there are some tutorials that use uh, rigid body dynamics and motors to get these things to work right. So if you want to use motors, you know, there are tutorials out there to do that. You know, you can feel free to do it. However, I didn't want to use dynamics and I didn't want to use motors. I wanted a manual control such as the null object and I just wanted to be able to spin and push this along the ground and animate it by hand rather than rely on dynamics. So unfortunately no one at least that I could find had any type of in-depth tutorial that explained how to set up a proper espresso rig to get this thing to spin, rotate correctly and everything stick to the ground. So I remember that back in the days when I first started using Cinema 4D around R8 and R9, there was a guy by the name of Oliver who had a website called Base80. So I remember that he had a tutorial on how to get a wheel to roll correctly in any direction. But unfortunately, Base80 has been down for some time now. That site is no longer there, and that's kind of a bummer because I was hoping to find that tutorial. So I had to dig a little further and I found out that some of the pages of Base80 have been archived over at, I believe it's archive.org. And I wasn't able to find that will spin tutorial. However, what I was able to find was something even better. So in the description to this video is a download link. Go download that file and open it up inside of Cinema 4D. And this is what you're going to find. Now keep in mind, the file that you're going to download is not a plugin. It's an actual scene file. So don't try to install this to your plugins directory. This is an actual scene file that you need to open up. So it's going to contain a wheel, the wheel object, and it also has a main null. Now whatever you do, you're not going to be animating and pushing along the wheel cylinder object. What you are going to be moving is this main null object called base wheel 1.7. So if we grab the main null and push it back and forth, you can see everything is rotating properly. There's no slipping. Everything is sticking to the ground as it rotates. If we rotate this 90 degrees, it's rotating properly in that direction as well. And if we take this around negative 180, it's still rotating properly. So now let's take it and uh, let's try 32 degrees like we did with the tank track and push this in some random direction. And there's no slipping. Everything is rotating properly the way it should. So if you want to change the size of this wheel, what you would do is click on the wheel cylinder object and just change the radius value to whatever you want. So we'll take the radius and we'll go down to say something like 30, I guess. And then what you want to do is don't push the wheel down while you have the wheel cylinder selected. If you want to push it down to the ground, use the main null object. So we'll just go to a side view here and take the main null object after resizing the wheel and push it down to the ground. All right, you go back and now it's rolling properly. 
So you don't have to adjust anything at all in the Expresso. All you have to do is just change the radius of the wheel cylinder to get it to the right size that you want. And then just make sure when you bring it down to the ground, or if you're making the wheel larger and you have to push it up to the ground, make sure you select the main null to reposition it. All right, so I'll just zero that back out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to connect it into our uh, Expresso for our tank track. So what we can do is take the base wheel object here and copy it. Go back over to our tank track file and we just need to zero out rotation on that. And then we want to paste in our base wheel object. Now notice that it is uh, rotated here, so we just need to rotate this in the right direction. And we want to position this so that it's going to be in this, uh, the cylinder here. So what I like to do is just take the base wheel object, drag that as a child of the driver spline, and then use the PSR command to put that into position. Now notice it's a little crooked and out of place. That's okay, we just need to drag this back out. And we need to then rotate that 90 degrees. Now we want to grab the wheel cylinder object and we want to make it, uh, we want to take the radius and go up to where it's the same size as the driver's spline. So we want to grab that and we want to push that out until it meets up with the driver's spline. All right, that looks good. And now we want to go into the Expresso. So what we can do is we can take this base null here and we want to take our uh, all of our objects from the tank track and we can just drag those in to that null as well. That way everything is a child of the main null. And you can see we've got two Expresso tags and what I want to do is I want to put this just into one Expresso tag rather than having two. So I want to keep the Expresso tag on the main null object. So I'm going to open that up. You can see there's quite a bit of Expresso in there. And we're going to go over here to the, uh, the uh, right hand side of the Expresso rig. And I want to open up this Expresso window here and I want to select everything that we have here, but we don't need this null, the driver spline radius, and over here that we were calculating uh, back at the beginning when I was showing you how to set that up for the X direction. We don't need any of that. We just need the main rig here. So I'm going to select all of those nodes and I'm going to go to edit, copy. We'll go back over here to the espresso window for the main null, click edit, paste. All of those should still be selected and we're going to push them all over here to the right hand side. So you can see here that the output, the very last node on the Expresso for this uh, base wheel controller thing here, uh, you can see the last one is the wheel cylinder rotation P. So let's see what happens if we were to connect this over to the rotation B for the driver spline. So let's connect that over to there. And now if we take our base wheel and let's delete that Expresso tag off of the driver's spline. Let's go with the base wheel and now let's push this. Okay, we're encountering some problems. Let's go back into the Expresso. Let's make sure everything here is correct. Okay, so I see what I did. I just disconnected the wheel cylinder. So what we want to do is we want to also take the output over here to the wheel cylinder. So not only do we want to keep, uh, not only do we want to have it hooked up to our driver spline for our tank track rig, but you also want to keep the wheel cylinder for the rotation peak connected as well. I just disconnected that. Didn't even notice that I did it. So we just want to make sure that you keep this connected here to the wheel cylinder. All right, so now if we take the main null and push it, Okay, so everything appears to be working there. And let's also rotate this 90 degrees. I'll just zero that out, push it in that direction. That appears to be working. Now let's rotate it in some 
random direction, let's just say maybe 36, push it along the ground, and sure enough, there's no slipping. You can see it's working, and I'll just zoom in so we can see this a little closer. You can see there is no slipping on the ground. Everything is working, and there you go. So in real life, when a bulldozer or an army tank turns, the wheels themselves don't actually turn. It kind of has to spin on a point because these wheels here don't really turn in the sense of rotate in the heading direction. So what that means is there's two tracks. One will go in reverse, one will go in forward, and that spins the vehicle either to the right or to the left. So how would we set this up to where it's properly rotating when it spins? So what we need to do is take this base wheel controller and we just need to duplicate it to make a second one. And we can just take this one and push it over. I think that'll be okay. And then we can take and select the first one, select the second one, and then hit Alt G to group them inside of a null. Now we can take this null and we need to go over here and use the uh, enable axis. And we just need to push this to where it's in the center of the vehicle. So let's just say this was a bulldozer or something. You would want the center to be about right there. And you just need to make sure that this is uh, right in the center of the wheel axis, which it is. So that's fine. Okay, so we'll turn that off. And now when we click on the main null and we push it back, it's rotating back, rotating forward. Let's rotate it around. Everything appears to be sticking. There's no issues, nothing is spinning in reverse. And the best part is that if we were to rotate this, notice that one set of tracks is going forward, one is going in reverse, and that's the way it works in real life with an actual track vehicle like a bulldozer or some type of army tank. One is going forward and one is going in reverse. So there is our uh, espresso set up for the tank track to where you're able to push it along the ground and have it roll and stick properly. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, I wasn't able to come up with this myself, but I did find the solution, and it was back from 2008, I believe, right around the time of R10, or actually I believe it was R9.5, because if you, uh, if you download the zip folder, you can see that it says base wheel 9.5. So this was actually put together with R9.5. So again, thank you to Base80, and I believe it was another guy, a French user uh, from a French Cinema 4D forum. The two of them collaborated and put this together to get it working. So I was very fortunate to be able to find this, uh, even though Base80's page has been down for some time now. All right, so I think that about wraps up this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below. If I missed anything, which I don't think I did, but if I did, knowing me, I'll either try to write it out in a comment or I will just make another tutorial. All right, guys, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.